that there is a path that leads to the hidden knowledge, the superior knowledge or Gnosis. Did you know that it is possible to walk this path in daily life? Do you know the real meaning of the Christian cross, the Egyptian Ankh cross or the Indian swastika? Do you know that all of them represent the same thing? You've explained to us in the last class about the need to awaken the hidden knowledge, the Gnosis that is latent inside each one of us. So could you please tell us how we can all awaken this knowledge in our life? Jesus, the great Kabir once said, You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The first thing we need to do is to acquire the precious jewel of consciousness because only consciousness can help us see the truth. How do we do that? Where is the truth? Beyond our hypotheses, beliefs, the suppositions or theories, we find what is known as the truth, able to liberate us from this world of appearances, from this relative world, from this world of illusions. Such a truth is not and never will be the exclusive patent of any school, creed, philosophy or social group. It is beyond time and it can only be experienced through a full manifestation of the divine consciousness. Acquiring this precious jewel, this consciousness, is only possible when you experience from instant to instant the postulates, exercises and practices which are taught and have always been taught by the universal wisdom. However, although we do not want to hurt any delicate sensibilities, we must emphasize the basic idea that in the cultural spiritual atmosphere of contemporary mankind, several different venerable institutions coexist, who very sincerely believe that they know the secret way, but who do not know it. The secret way has never been openly revealed. In rigorously Socratic terms, we can say that many experts who say that they know very deeply the path of the knife's edge are not only ignorant, but they are also ignorant of their own ignorance. There are schools that emphasize the idea that there exist 12 ways which are related to the 12 zodiacal constellations. Jesus Christ did not say that there were several ways. We have realized and verified that in none of his teachings can we find several ways. All the sacred books, the holy books of antiquity mention only one way, the secret way. It is cited, it is indicated in many verses, but people do not know it. Unveiling, indicating and revealing the esoteric path which leads to the final liberation is the only purpose of these studies. Okay, so you're saying that there is only one way, one path that leads us towards the superior knowledge about ourselves. You're also saying that it has been cited in all sacred books, but still people do not know it. Why is that? Since the sacred mysteries which lead man to the final liberation are universal, they have obviously blossomed in all the ages lived by this planet. Why do many people don't know about the secret path? In times already gone by, no one received this knowledge without first having demonstrated great longing for liberation, extreme courage to face adversities and a profound respect for these teachings. In order to give our dear listeners guidance, I want to describe some memories of ancestral times. Frankly, my case is not the only one. Other people also remember their lives very clearly. Well, I want to tell you that I was reincarnated in the holy land of the pharaohs during the dynasty of the pharaoh Kephren. I understand deeply the ancient mysteries of secret Egypt and the truth is that I've never been able to forget them. One afternoon, it does not matter which one, I was slowly walking across the desert sand in the shadow of a very ancient pyramid, I had a little rest and patiently mended one of my sandal straps. Then I diligently and eagerly looked for the august entrance. I wanted to go back to the straightway, the, the secret path. The guardian was, as usual, guarding the temple of the mystery. The interrogation was extremely tough. 
Who are you? I am a blind supplicant who is searching for light. What do you wish? Light. Then, in what I call a violent way, all my metallic objects were taken from me, and also my sandals and my tunic. What later happened? The trials of fire, air, water, and earth. In the test of fire, I had to control myself in the best way I could. When I went through a burning hall, the floor was full of steel beams, which were red hot. The way was very narrow among those lines of burning iron. There was hardly enough space to put one's feet. In those times, many aspirants perished with such effort. However, I was victorious. In the test of air, I had to jump from a high rock. At the bottom, you could only see a tenebrous and horrible precipice. Where other people perished, I triumphed. Many centuries have passed, and I still have not been able to forget, despite the dust of so many years, the sacred crocodiles of the lake in the test of water. If it had not been for the magic conjurations, I would have been devoured by those reptiles. Countless unfortunate people were crushed and broken by the rocks in the test of earth. However, I triumphed as I watched serenely two large masses. Nearing onto me and menacing my existence, as if they were going to reduce me to cosmic dust. Certainly, I am just a miserable worm of the mud of the earth, but I came out victorious. That is how I truly went back to the path of the revolution of the consciousness. I was accepted in the initiatory school. I was solemnly dressed in the white linen tunic of the priests of Isis. And the Egyptian Tau cross was placed on my chest. All these initiatory tests were, in reality, a filter. The teachings which were going to be received by the aspirant were too valuable to be profaned. Only courage and a sincere heart triumphed in these tests. Nowadays, the tests have changed. The form, not the substance, has changed. The times in which we live require that this be so. It is the same teaching, the eternal gnosis, which was delivered in all the temples and initiatory schools. But now, ancient Egypt's four tests of nature, or other tests typical of meritorious institutions, are no longer the filter to receive the knowledge. The filter is the very overwhelming amount of philosophies and creeds owned by different schools. And which terribly confuse the sincere person who is searching for the way to the light. Inquiring friend, as for this matter, we can only say one thing to you: investigate, check, and verify the Gnostic postulates. Do not conform to believing or disbelieving. This teaching will provide you with all the keys and practices, so that you can corroborate it. Only in this way will you be able to know accurately whether gnosis is one more theory or the real map of the way that leads us to the great reality which sustains everything. Okay, for those who are interested and who have the courage and interest to walk this path, is it possible for them to do so in their daily life? Or do they have to leave everything behind and go into the forests or mountains or monasteries? No, we don't need to leave the daily life. The superior knowledge can be found in every moment of our daily life. How? We need to understand that there are two lines in life. We can call one of them the horizontal, and the other one the vertical. They make up a cross inside ourselves here and now. The horizontal starts with birth and ends with death. Whoever is born must die. In the horizontal, we find all processes of being born, growing, reproducing, growing old, and then dying. In the horizontal, we find all the vain pleasures of life: liquor, fornication, adulteries, etc. In the horizontal, we find the struggle for our daily bread. All those intimate sufferings of practical life, but there exists an alternative line, the vertical. 
in this extraordinary vertical on this marvelous ladder we find the different levels of the being the transcendental and transcendent powers of the intimate in the vertical we find the esoteric powers the powers which defy the revolution of the consciousness etc with the forces of the vertical we can definitively influence the horizontal characteristics of practical life we can completely change our destinies so the vertical is wonderful and revolutionary by nature so while we live in this world we need to ask ourselves why we suffer a lot but what for we strive to have the things called food clothes and shelter and then what what is the result of our efforts living for the sake of living working to live and finally dying is not a wonderful thing in reality my friends we truly need to comprehend the sense of our existence the sense of living what are we here for why it is evident that the horizontal line is very vulgar it is trod by everyone it is evident that the vertical path is different it's the way of the intelligent rebels the way of the revolutionaries when you remember yourself when you work on yourself you go in fact along the vertical path are we by any chance happy about what we are who feels happy in the widest sense of the word we must be sincere none of us can say that we are an oasis of bliss we have terrible worries sorrows anxieties bitterness we need to get out of the mud hole we are in in fact we need to change radically and this would only be possible if we appeal to the transcendental powers of the vertical when someone is going along the horizontal remembers himself his own being his intimate reality when someone asks himself who am i where do i come from where am i going to what is the purpose of existence he undoubtedly enters the vertical path the path of the revolution of the consciousness the path which leads to the superman the intellectual animal normally called as human being is really just a bridge between the inferior animal and the superman we need to become true kings of creation masters of ourselves lords of all that is of all that has been and all that will be a change a radical transformation is urgent the laws of the earth would never be able to bring us peace so it is urgent to find the vertical way which we bear inside ourselves here and now the time has come for the great revolution for the psychological revolution it is extraordinary to enter the revolutionary vertical path which must lead us inevitably to the final liberation when you admit that you have a psychology of your own you undoubtedly start to work on yourself then you obviously enter the vertical path unfortunately we do not know ourselves even though we believe that we do know ourselves we need to be sincere to ourselves we need to dissect the one self the myself that is all the undesirable elements which we carry within wrath covetousness envy pride laziness gluttony etc it is easy to admit that we have a physical body provided with its organs but few people truly comprehend that we have a particular psychology when you comprehend that you have a psychology you begin with the process of psychological self observation but people tend to admit only the physical matter what is three dimensional the dense body because they can see hear touch and feel it in fact few people accept sincerely that they have a particular psychology when someone accepts it he really starts observing himself observing yourself in order to know yourself is transcendental decisive when you know yourself profoundly you know the secrets of the entire universe in the vertical path dear listener we must make a psychological inventory of ourselves there are many things inside us which we must eliminate many mistakes many vices many defects 
and there are also many things we must conquer many faculties many virtues it's evident anyone can comprehend it that the two lines the horizontal and the vertical can be found from moment to moment inside our psychological space they form a cross inside us now you will understand the deep meaning of the christian cross or the egyptian ankh cross or the hindustani swastika they were all symbols of objective art in ancient civilizations to remind the initiates about the two lines and the need to enter the vertical line in each moment at every moment the human being has to choose between the two ways the horizontal and the vertical it is evident that the horizontal is not difficult to live the vertical however implies great efforts one has to swim against the tide in the vertical we find the man who thinks feels and acts in an upright way and nobody would be able to deny that this is not easy at all dear friends we are now faced with a great dilemma in philosophical terms we can put it like this to be or not to be that is the question in each moment and the practical life as a school is magnificent to explore this question but treating it as an end in itself is obviously absurd very interesting you've mentioned that it is possible to change our destiny by changing our location on the vertical line of life in each moment so can you please explain more about this sure in the vertical path we find the different levels of the being when you start to work on yourself to eliminate any psychological defect you undoubtedly enter in fact and by right a superior level of the being nobody can deny that there are many different social levels so there are also different levels of the being what we are internally generous or mean liberal or stingy violent or peaceful chaste or lustful attracts the different circumstances of life let's imagine for a moment a cow is in a stable its own level of being attracts its own life if we take a cow out of a stable and send it home if we let it have a servant comb its hair very well put talcum powder on its body and perfume it it will continue being a cow nevertheless a beautiful house will become a stable everyone's level of being attracts their own lives a man is what his life is it is not by getting huge amounts of money that we can change our very existences no what we need is to pass to a superior level of being how can we pass to a superior level of being by discovering our psychological defects by bravely entering the revolutionary vertical path of psychology by eliminating our defects possibly hatred egotism gossip etc as a result our level of being would change and by changing the level of being our habits would become refined undoubtedly we would no longer be able to get along with the people who used to surround us earlier those people would not be able to get along with us either we would be obliged to make new friends and due to the law of psychological affinities we would make new friends the new friends would possibly offer us new opportunities in short the change of our level of being would change our life in the vertical path we have a chance to change our own level of being if we eliminate our psychological defects the results will be extraordinary because if we change our own level of being our whole lives will change also the annoying circumstances of existence the unpleasant circumstances of life are simply mere projections of what goes on inside us if we change internally the outer circumstances will change also but if we do not change internally the external circumstances will not change either many people complain about life's problems but those who think that way do not realize that they bear the root of all their problems inside themselves those problems are just the projections of their interiors because the problems are coming from within themselves because a man is what his life is if he does not change his own level of being 
if he does not change his inner life, nothing will change. The exterior is just a projection of the interior. Everyone wants happiness, but from where will it come? Yes, everyone bears within themselves the causes of their sufferings. And as long as the causes are not dissolved, the sufferings will not be dissolved either. Each effect has its cause, and each cause produces its effect. So if we really want a radical change, the first thing we must comprehend is that each one of us is on a specific level of being. It is quite true that the vertical way is also the way of self-fulfillment. It is the way of the superman. The way where you conquer extraordinary powers, attributes and gifts. However, patient listener, that long, narrow and difficult way starts here and now. Not by rejecting the adversities of life, but by facing them with the purpose of improving our level of being. We've never known a true anchorite of the way, a master in the path of secret knowledge who was an adulterer, a gossiper, a wrathful or envious person. The initiatory way requires that we first change our level of being. There you have the beginning of the way. What would the powers which defy be good for if we still bear resentment, hatred, pride, greed, fear or anger within? Therefore we who have set ourselves to walk along the vertical path want above all to achieve self-discovery, to know our own mistakes in order to eradicate them, to remove them from within because only in this way can we change fundamentally. Stay where you were. What did you do? Do you think by any chance that it is possible to pass to a superior level of being without eliminating psychological defects? Or are you happy about the level of being in which you find yourself at present?